Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of In Defense Of, where I, your host, Ryan the Indie Nerd, the current Deep Six reigning and defending heavyweight champion, looks at a controversial, hated, or otherwise not looked at um, as well, a angle, match, gimmick, wrestler, or anything in regards of wrestling that people just do not seem to enjoy. Today's episode, as we are leading up to Extreme Rules for WWE, uh, I'm going to defend uh, gimmick pay-per-views. So pay-per-views that are based on a simple gimmick uh, or set of gimmicks, such as Extreme Rules, where most of the matches, if not all the matches, have some sort of uh, no holds barred, extreme rules, weapons matches, uh, etc. going into them. Tables, ladders, and chairs, also known as TLC, where most of the matches, if not all the matches, have either tables, ladders, chairs, and maybe all three of them in the same match, and sometimes even stairs. Money in the Bank, where you have the ladder matches, Hell in a Cell, where the whole idea is that there are a few matches inside Hell in a Cell. And I'd even throw in Night of Champions or Clash of Champions, whatever the WWE decides to make it that year, as well as Elimination Chamber. And the whole idea is where these pay-per-views sometimes get negative reactions from fans solely because of the reliance on a gimmick instead of the actual wrestling itself or where you have an extreme rules pay-per-view maybe not all the matches are extreme rules or not enough of them are extreme rules matches and you have this idea of well then why have it at extreme rules to begin with for shows such as night of champions or clash of champions where all belts are defended uh, it actually kind of has this idea to some fans that it will cheapen certain other pay-per-views. You have this idea that, well, if it's not Night of Champions or Clash of Champions, whatever they call it this year, that year, uh, then you're not going to have all the belts defended, maybe even not most of the belts defended, as we've seen in previous weeks and months of pay-per-view. This whole episode is going to be around defending why these types of gimmick pay-per-views should still exist. Maybe they could be tweaked a little bit, uh, but the idea of a gimmick pay-per-view is not as bad of an idea as we hear from certain types of fans, uh, especially casual ones who might not watch every single uh, pay-per-view or every single episode of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, whatever it may be. So the first thing I want to talk about is with these gimmick pay-per-views, there are a lot of them. If you can think back to all the different pay-per-views that the WWE normally does, uh, we have Royal Rumble, which is based around the Royal Rumble matches normally. We have Elimination Chamber, where you have the entire pay-per-view based around uh, the Elimination Chamber matches. We have Extreme Rules, where and just the normal taglines is the one night a year the WWE goes extreme uh, this year's catchphrase or tagline was all matches are created equal uh, when really that was just a bad tagline for it um, you have tables, ladders, and chairs which is very similar to Extreme Rules where there's a lot of new DQ matches involved a lot of weapon based matches we have Money in the Bank where you have the ladder matches going on. Sometimes you have one or two Money in the Bank matches as well as the occasional uh, ladder match just for a title in, uh, of some sort. We have Night of Champions slash Clash of Champions because they always kind of change that where every single title is supposed to be defended. However, the, that pay-per-view hasn't really gone on every single year I believe it's been a year or two now that we've been without that one uh, you could throw in Survivor Series where 
everybody knows that there's the annual Survivor Series tag team matches where it's normally five or six people from uh, on a team that it's an elimination match. So if you go down, if you get pinned, submitted, disqualified, you're eliminated, and so on and so forth until you have a winner. Uh, with the brand split, it's become more of a whole idea where it's Raw, the one night a year where Raw goes against SmackDown. And these ideas that, that these gimmicks can actually kind of make these pay-per-views boring, predictable, um, annoying, I don't really see it as much. I think that there are some ideas where, yeah, money in the bank, you're expecting two good ladder matches. The rest of the match, the rest of the card normally isn't focused around money in the bank. Uh, however, when you have the money in the bank go on early, now you've got uh, a whole idea where, okay, well, for the rest of the, this card, maybe somebody might be able to cash in, especially if it's the men's match, just because the men's match normally... Uh, there's more men's matches on a, a card compared to women's matches. So there's more opportunities for the men to have a cash-in of sorts, especially uh, during the years where it was just a champion of your choosing, not a specific championship or a specific brand that you were labeled onto. For Extreme Rules in particular, I do think that the idea that this is a show that, I mean, not every match is going to be an Extreme Rules match, but there's other shows during the year that have as many, if not more, maybe less, uh, Extreme Rules matches, gimmick matches uh, worked in. I, I do think that Extreme Rules has its place in this uh, day and age in wrestling, uh, especially with certain types of matches being added it's not every day that you see a last man standing match uh, it's not every day that you see no holds barred matches anymore um, normally you'll just hear them called the extreme rules match um, but with no holds barred you're definitely looking at more of a submission style where you're allowed to do pretty much anything uh, with that with TLC, you've got tables, ladders, and chairs matches. It's, again, they normally try to keep it so that tables matches um, and most of the year ladder matches are not thrown in at random pay-per-views. Uh, while chairs matches, while it might not be the best match, um, normally there's no chairs matches throughout the year. Uh, it's just for TLC. And for the Elimination Chamber and Hell in a Cell type of pay-per-views, you do have those big foreboding structures hanging around the ring. Normally all pay-per-view as well as the match, the shows leading up to that pay-per-view. So it's always interesting to see that go on. Um, as somebody who watches WWE semi-regularly, uh, and watches other promotions, there's not another promotion that really has that structure that's hanging around uh, the entire time. And it's definitely a way to keep people interested. Is your, When people hear about Hell in a Cell matches, you always think of uh, Mankind versus Undertaker, uh, uh, Edge versus Undertaker. You think of maybe if you only watch WrestleMania as you think of Shane versus Undertaker um, I know I'm mentioning Undertaker a lot but there seems to always be Undertaker in those matches that uh, are very special very synonymous with Hell in a Cell you can even go back to the Armageddon uh, 2000 I believe uh, pay-per-view the six way in the uh, chamber or not the chamber, the Hell in a Cell, uh, with Angle, uh, uh, Rikishi, Taker, again. Uh, that was a very fun match, a very enjoyable match. Uh, had a lot of interesting segments throughout it. Uh, and it didn't take away from the rest of the show. Now, 
that was still early on in the conception of Hell in a Cell. And since they've had these Hell in a Cell pay-per-views, Hell in a Cell is still one of the more anticipated type of matches, I believe, uh, for most wrestling fans, especially those who only watch WWE. Uh, it's not every day that you get to see a Hell in a Cell match, and most Hell in a Cell matches do work out very well. There's only a few seldom ones that are real duds. It's very interesting to see what they can do. It's different than a steel cage match where you can escape to win, uh, and normally there's not many weapons involved since the weapons are on the outside of the ring and you can't get outside of the ring without ending the match. Where Hell in a Cell, the entire ring is encompassed. Uh, you can sometimes get out of the cell and you still don't win. You still have to get a pinfall or submission. And so that always leads to an interesting dynamic of will they go up to the top? What will happen when they're on the top? Is there going to be that famous Undertaker Mankind spot where somebody falls through the cell? Will somebody go flying off the cell? So it's always interesting to see that. And throughout the night, even though not every match is going to be based in the cell, you're always going to have that thinking of, well, what match is going to be the one that steals the show that leaves that imprint on everybody's minds when they leave the show or stop watching the show what is going to be that final moment that big moment during the match during one of the hell in the cell matches where something goes what seems to be wrong or something goes uh extreme so i i think that those hell in the cell matches pay-per-views actually are not as bad as they uh kind of get a lot of times they kind of get a lot of slack because it's a whole pay-per-view based on one gimmick and that gimmick happens maybe two to three times during the night uh on a good pay-per-view uh however if you had you know all eight nine matches in a hell in a cell that would kind of diminish the specialty of those matches so you really want them to feel special and I, I think the way the WWE does it today definitely makes it seem special still. With Elimination Chamber, it's not an every year pay-per-view. And it, again, it's not a match that goes throughout the entire pay-per-view. Not every match is an Elimination Chamber match. There are certain matches that you just don't need a, a chamber for. for. If it's uh, a one-on-one -on -one feud, you don't need a chamber for it because then you're adding four other people into a match that has no effect on anybody else. Uh, for titles, again, you don't need that either. Uh, not every title needs to be defended in a cell. However, the matches that do end up going into the chamber normally work out very well. Um, there's, again, a few duds uh, spaced out throughout the years. Uh, but for the most part, they do work out very well. It doesn't take away from the rest of the event. You see the structure throughout the night. You get reminded about it. And it's not like you're just thinking, well, this is just a regular show. You, you still remember that this is going to have some special types of matches in them uh, that are going to be fun for the most part. And for the Royal Rumble, again, there's no way that you could try to change that the Royal Rumble pay-per-view is easily one of the best uh one of the ones that I look forward to the most every single year it's actually the first pay-per-view I ever watched um was one of the Royal Rumbles so just getting that whole idea that well it's a gimmick pay-per-view because there's the Royal Rumble is involved and it's in the name you don't want a Royal Rumble for every single match that would be Tiring. It would be a long night. The two or the one or two Royal Rumbles that you have during the night are perfect, especially when they space them out. One near the beginning, one near the end. It's a perfect way to do it, uh, and nobody's asking for those to be changed. At least not that I've ever heard. So these ideas that gimmick pay per views are some of the more annoying, some of the tiring ones, some of the most boring pay-per-views because you're just 
tired of seeing the same type of matches over and over again. I don't think that really stands up. I don't think there are that many pay-per-views where you're actually having a one single gimmick the entire night. There's not a t TLC pay-per-view where every match is a tables match or every match is a chairs match or every match is a ladder match. They're making sure that they're spaced out uh, during uh, Hell in a Cell. Like I said, not every match is a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, they might have some no DQ matches involved that might take that some people might be like, okay, well that's taking away from Extreme Rules. Why wouldn't they just make this an Extreme Rules pay per view? Uh, but the idea that the cell is there is what make, tries to make it special. The one thing that if I could critique these pay per views is maybe uh, don't do them every single year. You could do them maybe swap Hell in a Cell or Elimination Chamber since they are kind of similar ma uh, ma uh, gimmick pay-per-view style matches where you've got the structure above, it comes down for a few matches, goes back up, comes down for a match. Um, maybe space those out every so often, maybe make it a rotating thing. It would actually make it a little more special because you don't get to see those types of matches every year. Uh, when the Elimination Chamber returned after a few years' absence, it was really uh, enticing. A lot of people were very interested in what would happen. Uh, they really wanted to see that type of match back. And I do think that if you did maybe rotate some of them, that would be a more interesting way to do it. Uh, same thing with TLC and Elimination Chamber. If that's a big complaint that you might have, where you want, you feel like those two types of pay-per-views are very similar, but you still want those extreme pay-per-views, uh, maybe have them rotate every year or every other year, whatever it might be. Uh, but like I said, these gimmick types of pay-per-views are still very good. They are still uh, very unique to the WWE. As of right now, you don't really see other companies, other promotions, uh, especially major promotions doing that type of stuff like New Japan doesn't have a extreme rules pay-per-view or the rumble pay-per-view or money in the bank pay-per-view they've got their tournament style uh, matches or shows that go on throughout the year um, TNA you really don't have that anymore you, you've had a few in the past but it hasn't been an every year thing where you have those gimmicky type of pay-per-views Ring of Honor definitely doesn't do that uh, you might have an extreme rules match or a ladder warfare match or something like that, but you don't have a ladder warfare pay-per-view. You don't have uh, any types of gimmicky pay-per-views. Uh, that's normally just the same old, same old ones. And I do think that those do hinder other companies that they don't do those gimmicky pay-per-views because you might want to see how other companies work those similar types of pay-per-view uh, styles. It would be interesting to see what maybe uh, an AEW could do with a Money in the Bank style match. How would they do it? Would they do it the same way where it's a mixture of guys, some mid-carders, but mostly main eventers going for uh, a chance at a title? Um, maybe throwing a Hell in a Cell style match. See what they could do inside the structure would they do it any differently than wwe same thing throwing it over to impact wrestling see what they can do with it uh with those types of matches it would be interesting to see other companies actually adopt more of those gimmicky style pay-per-views so with that being said this is the end of episode two of in defense of leave your comments maybe some other ideas that you would want to see defended in a future episode of In Defense Of down below in the comments. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook at Deep Six Wrestling. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling. And make sure that you subscribe, like, and get notified on our videos here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much and enjoy the rest of your day.